Hello friends, my name is Kalpesh and welcome to my YouTube channel Automotive Trucks. In this video, I am going to discuss about the terms which are related to the vehicle aerodynamics. These terms, they will be very helpful to understand complete phenomena of vehicle aerodynamics that I am going to discuss later on. So let's get started. Demands in the auto industries. The better fuel economy and better performance these two are the demands which are created by the consumers to the automotive manufacturers and these two demands we can observe in all segments of the vehicle reduction in the wind noise considering the comfort of the occupants consumers always demands these parameters the noise reductions noise produced by the air and the reduction in the noise wind noise road holding and the vehicle stability these two parameters which are focused considering the safety of the occupants and again these two parameters are always demanded by uh, demanded in the each segments of the vehicles so these are the demands which are created by the consumers to the automotive manufacturers and due to these demands these automotive uh, manufacturers they are forced to focus on the study of aerodynamic drag aerodynamic resistance of different body shapes of the vehicles let's see now the question is what is aerodynamic so aerodynamic is the study of solid body moving through the atmosphere and the interaction which takes place between the body surface and the surrounding air with varying relative speeds and wind direction this is known as aerodynamics in simple manner we can say considering the vehicle aerodynamics it is the study of vehicle while vehicle is moving through the atmospheric air focus on the forces and the effect generated due to that forces which are produced by the aerodynamics only so uh, this fundamental basic things we can understand with the help of this plot this plot it is for the vehicle speed in kilometer per hour versus resisting force opposing the motion this plot is generated for the uh, two uh, body styling one we can consider as the streamline body which has a low air resistance and one we can say a poor streamline body which has a slightly higher air resistance so here is the difference in terms of coefficient of drag by uh, this comparison it is done with the constant rolling resistance of the vehicle so by observing this plot we can say that increment in the air resistance we can observe that it is relatively low at low relative speed of the vehicle as the vehicle speed increases and reaches up to uh, the certain speed we can find the sudden increment in the air resistance sudden increment in the aerodynamic drag this low air, air resistance which is for the highly streamlined body style uh, of any vehicle body styling it is the area by which we can uh, we can reduce the aerodynamic drag body styling has to accommodate the passengers and the luggage space the functional functional powertrain steering suspension and more uh, mechanical uh, units okay thus vehicle design will conflict with the minimizing the body surface drag so that the body shape finally accepted is nearly always a compromise so automotive manufacturers has to consider such kind of a parameters uh, while uh, choosing a body style for any segments of the vehicles now the first term is boundary layer boundary layer we can understand uh, with the help of this figure we are discussing the aerodynamics that means air it is the moving fluid air has a viscosity viscosity that means it is the internal friction between the adjacent layer of the air whenever there is a relative air movement consequently when there is a sliding between the adjacent layer of air energy is dissipated energy is dissipated due to the friction of two adjacent layers of air in this figure you can observe this indicates the adjacent layer of the air and this v1 v2 v3 v4 and v5 they indicates the velocity of the adjacent layers this is the surface of body 
solid surface. When air flows over the thin body, boundary layer is formed. Now, what does it mean? Okay. When air flows over any surface, loosely attach themselves so that relative air velocity at surface becomes a zero. The layer which is exactly in contact with the solid surface due to the resistance provided by the this body surface the velocity of that layer it becomes zero okay. so here the velocity of this layer layer it becomes zero and as we are going far away from this surface far away from the surface the adjacent layers due to the decrement in the frictional forces the velocity starts increasing and at certain level we are getting the velocity which is equal to the free stream velocity of moving air so that distance from the surface at which we are getting the velocity of moving fluid which must be equal to the free stream velocity of that fluid that distance it is known as a boundary layer thickness okay so thickness of the boundary layer this uh, we can understand that higher the resistance provided by the surface we are getting higher thickness of boundary layer if the surface provides less resistance we are getting the this thickness of boundary layer it, it will be a quite small so this skin friction skin friction we can understand with the help of the simple example of moving plate considered here skin friction it is restraining force preventing a thin plate placed edgewise to an oncoming air stream being dragged along with in this figure you can observe that this is our plate thin plate and these are the rollers in this case the direction of air stream it is in this direction due to the skin friction produced at the surface it tends to move in the same direction that is called the dragging of this plate and this phenomena is generated due to the skin friction so the skin friction is also known as a viscous resistance generated within the boundary layer and it depends on the surface area on which air flows the degree of surface roughness or the smoothness we can say and the relative air speed higher the air speed the dragging force it will be higher the surface finish the thickness of boundary layer is influenced by the surface finish we can observe this phenomena in this figure this figure shows the boundary layer thickness for rough surface and the smooth surface in both figure we have a uh, thickness of the boundary layer uh, this is for the rough surface this is for the smooth surface now in the rough surface we can observe that here at this point the velocity of the boundary layer due to the highest friction it becomes zero and as we are going far away from the this surface the velocity it starts increasing due to the less frictional force so these arrows it indicates the velocity increment in the velocity and this parabolic curve it indicates the decrement in the velocity in the case of rough surface we are getting the thickness of the boundary layer it is equals to we can say up to this point while comparing with the same free uh, with the same air velocity and if we are placing a smooth surface in in place of the rough surface here is the smooth surface okay. then the thickness of the boundary layer it will decrease and it is up to this point we can say above this point we are getting the velocity of moving air which is equals to the free stream velocity of air okay so below this point we can consider the thickness of boundary layer a smooth surface small boundary layer thickness a rough surface higher boundary layer thickness this comparison it is done at the same velocity of air stream the venturi the air pressure and the speed air pressure and the speed in terms of velocity changes in the diverging and converging section so venturi shape we can observe in this figure this is the we can say converging shape and later on diverging shape and the 
airstream is moving from moving in this direction so at this point we can say where before the airstream enters to the converging section the moving air particles has a enough space and due to that enough space they can come near uh, to each other and due to that uh, condition the pressure was comparatively high and as the if you uh, as the air particles they are quite nearer to each other the velocity start decreasing so at this point we have we can say pressure will be higher and the velocity it will be lower now as this airstream it enters to the converging shape it enters to the converging shape due to this restriction the moving air particle they cannot move it with each other due to this restriction in the area and due to this here the pressure drops occurs pressure drops and velocity increases and this will occur due to continuously till this point this we are considering as a throat throat of the uh, the swanchuri okay. so at this point we are getting the lowest pressure of the whole channel now once this airstream it enters to the diverging section this section okay. now air particle has a enough space and due to that enough space again air particles they comes they come they come near to each other and due to this phenomena the pressure increases and velocity starts decreasing so this phenomena occurs in the venturi shape as streamline as streamline phenomena we can understand with the help of this figure in this figure we considered a sedan car which is moving in the at uh, atmospheric air so we can say that this moving car displaces the air ahead so that the air is forced to flow around and towards the rear the flow pattern of air movement around the car can be visualized by the air streamline so air streamline uh, air streamline it will be helpful to understand the flow pattern around the bodies of the vehicle streamline broadly follows the contour of the body but any sudden changes it disturbs the streamline for example you can consider the side mirror or uh, the wind screen while moving air stream it follows the contour of the body profile and it comes across any sudden changes of the body styling for example we are considering this uh, wind screen this shape it creates highest resistance and at this point we are getting the highest pressure of moving air stream this type of study we can uh, understand with the help of air stream line in this case i am not going to discuss about the pressure distribution of uh, moving air over the body or beneath the body or front front side of the body or the rear side body that i will i'm going to discuss in my next video these are the uh, we can say Uh, fundamental terms which we need to understand before we look into the exact aerodynamics vehicle aerodynamics fundamental uh, theories thank you thank you guys thank you for watching my video in a video if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe this channel and click on the bell button so you will get the all stuff that i'm going to up upload easily thank you thank you once again